Hey what's going on everybody, Jason here, and welcome back to another LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga video. There are a ton of characters in LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, but in this video I wanted to talk about a particular character. This character is the astromech droid known as R2-KT, the droid with the heart of gold. Now at first glance, R2-KT stands out from the rest of the astromech droids cosmetically in that this droid has pink color details as opposed to the other astromech droids in the game. Well, that's not the only important thing about R2-KT. Although R2-KT is pink for a specific reason, R2-KT's story begins in the real world with a Star Wars fan who went by the name of Katie Johnson. Katie was an avid Star Wars fan, and her dad, Albin Johnson, is the founder of the 501st Legion fan organization. The 501st Legion started as a cosplay organization, with its members equipping themselves with the armor and gear from clone troopers and stormtroopers from the movies, custom making them by hand. Over time, the organization gained a world wide popularity and started using their cosplay talents for charity events. But now that you know a little bit about the 501st Legion, let's get back to Katie's story. Katie Johnson was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer in 2004. Albin Johnson began receiving tons of support from the Star Wars community and the 501st Legion started doing fundraisers for Katie. In addition, George Lucas himself filmed a Get Well video for her while he was on tour promoting and marketing Revenge of the Sith. However, unfortunately for Katie, her condition would get worse and it left her bedridden. Because Katie was a huge Star Wars fan, she reminisced to the scene in Attack of the Clones where R2-D2 watched over Padme on Coruscant during the first act of the movie, and how she wished a droid would look after her in the same way. So, Albin Johnson had an idea. Why not build an astromech droid so that it could do just that, watch over Katie just as R2 did for Padme. Then, Katie's older sister suggested that they paint the droid pink and call it R2-KT. After the revelation, Albin discovered the R2 Builders Group in 2005 and wanted them to build the droid for Katie. So, Jerry Green and the entire R2 Builders Club came together to help Albin create the droid for Katie. The group knew that time was short, so Andy Schwartz of the club shipped out his own personal R2 unit to Katie with a fresh coat of pink paint. This way, Katie could enjoy seeing the droid while she still could. Katie loved the droid, and just like she wished for, the droid watched over her 24-7 in her room, even even in her final days. On August 9th, 2005, Katie Johnson passed away in her sleep. Almost a year later, in July of 2006, the project to build R2-KT was completed and presented to the Johnson family. R2-KT then became an icon in the Star Wars world. The droid has been used to spread awareness for pediatric illnesses, visiting other children who are Star Wars fans afflicted by serious conditions. Then, in 2007, Hasbro created an R2-KT toy, raising $100,000 from make a wish in the process. R2-KT and Katie's story does not end there. The droid has been immortalized in the canon of Star Wars. R2-KT's first appearance in Star Wars is thanks to Dave Filoni, who animated the droid in the Star Wars The Clone Wars feature film, which released in 2008. R2-KT would then make a handful of appearances in the Clone Wars TV show, as well as appearing in the background of a couple of the scenes in The Force Awakens. The droid would then be given the full Star Wars treatment. Backstories and numerous adventures were created to establish R2-KT's involvement in the overall lore of Star Wars. After several other appearances, R2-KT was then added as a playable character in LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. So, in this video, I will also show you how to unlock R2-KT in LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. That way, the droid with the heart of gold can accompany you on your adventures in the game. First, you need to go to Dakar. R2-KT will be at the Resistance base, and once you talk to the droid, she will tell you that the Resistance needs help on Takodana. Upon accepting the request, make your way to Takodana, and on arrival, rendezvous with R2-KT. Follow R2-KT towards Maz's castle, and once you make it to the designated area, defend R2-KT and the Resistance soldiers from the First Order Stormtroopers. Once the Stormtroopers are defeated, speak with R2-KT one more time, and you will have completed the Takodana mission. R2-KT will then be available to purchase as a playable character for 100,000 studs. Thank you. 
Star Wars has a special place in all of our hearts as Star Wars fans, and seeing stories like this serves as a reminder that life is precious. Even in our darkest moments, there are certain forms of media and stories that stick out to us and make an impact. Whether it is inspiring, thought-provoking, or tugs on our heartstrings, there is always a deeper meaning for those who are passionate for well-written stories. I wanted to share this story with you because Katie's story stood out to me, and I wanted to highlight the impact her and her droid made on the Star Wars community. In addition, if you guys want to learn more about R2KT and the legacy this droid has had on the greater Star Wars community, I will have a link down below in the description to R2KT.com. On the website, they cover the full backstory of R2KT, which is what I covered in this video. It also showcases the builders of the R2KT droid, the adventures of R2KT going to conventions and charity events, as well as an extensive gallery of fan pictures of R2KT, as well as all of the appearances R2KT R2KT has made in Star Wars. And so, in conclusion, R2KT and the legacy of R2KT honors Katie Johnson. May the Force be with you, Katie. Always.